I'm on page 28 in your notes packet, and the topic of this video is to use coordinate geometry in order to prove triangles congruent. All right, so I'm going to get right down to business here. Number one says, given triangle ABC with those vertices, triangle DEF with the given vertices, and they want us to, of course, prove that these two triangles are congruent to each other. So the very first thing that I'm going to do, and I hope that this is instinct and innate and you're feeling it also, of course I'm going to graph the triangles so that I have a very good visual idea of exactly what I'm working with here. So I'm going to take a minute to go ahead and plot these points. And so that I can be pre precise, I'm going to go ahead and grab my straight edge, use my straight edge to sketch my triangle. So there's my first triangle, ABC. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw the second triangle. All right, so my goal or my mission is to prove the red one is congruent to the blue one. So I'm thinking in my world of rigid motions, if I could find a rigid motion or a sequence of rigid motions that would map the red triangle onto the blue one, I'd be good to go. So that's the first thing that I'm going to look for. I really don't see any apparent reflections or rotations or translations that'll map the red one onto the blue one. So while that was a good thought, I kind of got up to bat and I struck out, I'm going to have to try again. In my world of proving triangles congruent, at this point I have three different methods. Side, 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 angle, side, or angle, side, angle. In the coordinate plane, unless they're right angles, I don't have any way of determining or showing whether or not two angles are congruent. So that will eliminate angle, side, angle, and side, side, side as potential options, leaving me with side, side, side. So my mission now is to show that all three lengths in the first triangle are congruent to all three sides or all three lengths in the second triangle. And the formula that I have that will determine the length of a line segment in the coordinate plane is the distance formula. So the distance formula is what I'm going to be working with in this particular example. So if I'm working with a formula, the first thing I want to do is jot it down on my paper. You should jot it down in your notes as well. And now I want to show that the lengths of segments AC and DF are the same. So I'm going to go find the length of, length of segment AC, or in other words, the distance between points A and C. So this is great practice in using the distance formula. Remember that a helpful tip I gave you when using the distance formula is to take everything that you see underneath the radical sign plug that into your calculator. So when I plug in everything that I just highlighted in green, I get 32. It's still under the square root. So radical 32. 32 has a factor that's a perfect square. 16 will go in there two times. So I'm going to rewrite that as the square root of 16 times the square root of 2, which when all is said and done and it's simplified, it simplifies to four square roots of two. So now that I found the distance between points A and C, I'm now going to go find the distance between points D and F. And again, just as a friendly reminder to you, make life easy on yourself. 
take what you see underneath the radical sign, put that whole expression into the calculator. So I'm going to give you a second to dig your calculator out and do that. This one, too, comes out to be square root of 32, which we know will simplify or reduce down to that four square roots of 2. All right, so at this point, I know the distance between points A and C is four square roots of 2. I know the distance between points D and F is four square roots of 2. There's one pair of sides in the first triangle, or one side in the first triangle, congruent to one side in the second triangle. That's one pair of congruent sides. So now I'm going to go do the same thing for a second pair of sides. So let's see, I'm going to go find the distance between points A and B. And again, let's make life easy on yourself. I'm going to take everything that's underneath the radical sign. I'm going to punch that into my calculator. When I do that, I end up with square root of 10. So I like that number because it doesn't have any factors that are perfect squares, which means I'm done. I'm going to now go do the same thing. Find the distance between points D and E. Again, make life easy on yourself. Take only what's underneath the radical, punch that into your calculator. So I find that the distance between points D and E is exactly the same as the distance between points A and B. There's a second pair of congruent sides. The third thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go find distances for my third pair of sides. So I'm going to go find the distance between points B and C. And again, make life easy on yourself. Go dig out your calculator, type in only what you see underneath the radical sign, type it in exactly as you see it. So that distance there is root 26. And lastly, I'm going to go do the same thing for points E and F. I'm hoping you're seeing a recurring theme here. Make life easy on yourself. Type in only what's underneath the radical sign. Type it in as it, exactly as it, you see it. And your calculator should tell you square root of 26. So now we've got three pairs of congruent sides. So the last thing I have to do is write a little explanation ex telling exactly why these two triangles are congruent. So I'm going to say segments of equal length or equal measure are congruent. And therefore, these two triangles have three pairs of congruent sides.
And this makes them congruent by side, side, side. Done. All right, if you have any questions, now would be a great time to jot them down in the margin. If not, next time you come back to class, we'll make sure that we get some practice with this. Till then, thank you very much for the gift of your time and watching the video. Hopefully you learned something and I made that time of yours worthwhile.